So if you ever had a job just randomly stop in the middle and you've wanted to restart it, or you've needed to pause and continue a job afterwards, well this is the tutorial for you. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode. I must apologise up front, it's raining really hard today so if you can hear that on the roof I am sorry. So in today's episode we are going to cover a couple of different scenarios. Maybe you want to pause a job, power down, restart the next day. Often what people do with machines like 3018s. Perhaps your machine has stalled or lost power and you want to pick up from the point it crashed. Or maybe you've broken a bit halfway through and again don't want to start right from the beginning. Well basically the way we are going to do that is we're going to take a look at the G code and effectively go right here's the start where do we want to jump down to and begin the job from that point. Now don't be put off by the fact I've said looking at the G code this is actually a really simple process and I'll talk you through every step nice and easy. But first, now before you even start your job, there are two things you can do to make your life easier. The first is use a Z probe whenever you are setting the Z height. This is the most accurate and repeatable method for setting the Z height and I definitely recommend it over something like using the slide in paper method. The second is to home your machine before you begin. Homing your machine allows your control system to know exactly where your machine is at any given point. So therefore, when you set the start position for the job, take a note of those coordinates and you can always return to the exact same position should your machine crash or you pause and want to restart a job. Now if your machine doesn't have limit switches and I know a lot of 3018 machines don't then consider using something like a V-bit in order to set the start position. Ultimately the goal is to be as precise as possible for setting that start position before you begin your job. How terrible, a power cut. So let's move on to the next step for recovery. So taking a closer look, this should have cut eight simple shapes out. It's stalled on the fifth shape. First thing I would suggest doing is raise the spindle up out of the material before starting the power back up. Just in case it jolts or move, you don't want it damaging the piece of wood. So what we'll do now is turn the power on, rehome the machine and bring it back to the zero point for starting the job and then take a look at the file. So if your goal is to pause a job, power down and restart the next day for example, always make sure you return back to zero. The reason this is important is whenever you power a machine down, the stepper motors effectively lose control of the axis. So let's say for example, your spindle is hanging in the air. When you turn the power off, it may drop down slowly. So therefore, if you turn the power back on, it could be in a different position than where you actually left it. By returning back to zero, the spindle is more supported because it should be touching the top of the material and therefore less chance of it moving when you power the machine back up. So the first thing we're going to do is head to NC Viewer. You can either type this straight into the address bar or Google it and it will be the first result that comes up. Now when it loads it does look a little bit complex. There are some instructions and keyboard shortcuts over here but for the most part don't worry too much as I say it is simpler than you think. What we're going to do now is load in the job that we were running. So I'm going to load this file in called Simple Shapes and we will see in the visualizer if I zoom out by pulling on the scroll wheel that it is the job that we were just running. Now ultimately we know the job failed on this fifth shape over here so we need to get somewhere just before that job starts. Now obviously this list of G code looks quite confusing but as I say do not worry it is simpler than you believe. The first couple of lines are quite important. You don't need to know what each command is, but it's all about the machine getting set up to run your job. So for example, G21 simply tells the machine all of your commands are going to be in millimeters. And then you'll start to see some repetitive codes such as G0 going on up here and G1 that we have all down here. 
So G0, G1 commands, what does it all mean? Well, they're actually pretty simple. A G0 command is what's known as a rapid rate movement. You'll often see your spindle lift up, move faster to another part of the job and come back down to begin it. That movement right there, that's your G0 command, the rapid movement, and often occurs obviously above the material. That is why it's a safer place to start a job from because you're beginning above the material and coming into it. A G1 command is actually a movement usually within the material itself where it is machining through it. So if you started from a G1 command, it's a little bit more risky because it's assuming it's already in an area that is being cut. So therefore, that's why we look for G0 commands. As I say, they're safer to start from and should just ease the job back in nice and gently. So I'm going to click back and forth through a few lines and keep an eye on this black marker here and you'll see it move to different points in the job. So if I click to the very start, you'll see it's at the beginning of the job where it's on the surface of the material. Then if I click to the first G command, it raises up five millimeters. As it says there, it's said five, so it's lifted it up five millimeters. But if I jump to some of these G1 commands, you'll see it's gone to the blue lined areas where it is actually machining into the material. Now, the first thing we'll want to make a note of is essentially where the machine has finished setting up the job initially. And ultimately, that's usually where it turns the spindle on. So this command line right here, S12000M3, is basically telling the spindle to start at 12,000 RPM. And this ultimately is finishing the setup of the job. So in short, it's basically told the machine a few commands, such as we're working in millimeters. It's raised the spindle up five millimeters to start the job, and it has turned the spindle on. Now, some of your commands may be slightly different, but usually this S command is essentially the end of that setup procedure. And we can make a note that this is on line seven. Now, I just briefly mentioned about the G0 commands being the important ones that we are after. These are essentially the orange lines on the display where it's jumping from position to position in order to complete each task. Now, as I said, we don't need to go through all of this line by line. We can simply use a shortcut to skip through the job. So if you press Control F on your keyboard, you'll see this search for command. And if we type G0, it will tell us how many occurrences of G0 appear within the text itself. But basically what we're going to do is skip through until we get to somewhere over here towards this square. So I've skipped through a couple of times. You'll start to see this black bar move about on the visualizer. And we could do a couple of shapes. The third shape, keep going. Right, there we are. So if I go back one, it's just finished the fourth shape. And the next one will be starting the fifth shape. Now this may sound obvious, but always err on the side of caution. If you are not quite sure where your job stopped or it was paused, then go back a couple of steps to be safe. It may add a little bit more time onto the job, but it's better than going a step too far and ultimately ruining your job. So yeah, definitely start at least one or two steps behind where you think it stopped just to be safe. So to be as safe as possible, this is where I want the job to start just before it began that fifth shape. So we can see that is on line 254. So what we essentially want to do now is we'll delete out everything in between. So we're going to come up to one line before that, and we're going to drag all the way back to line 7 at the beginning. If we highlight that, hit delete, we can delete out the blank row. And now what we can do is come down to this plot button at the bottom, and we should see this visualization change. There you are. So now we'll be going from the beginning straight over and starting at that fifth shape from the beginning of it instead of part way through where it actually crashed. So that really is as simple as it is. What we can now do is click save on this, download the file, and then all you have to do is load that file back into your G code sender and we'll start it from scratch like you would a normal job. So the machine is now back at its start point or its origin point. We're going to come up to the open folder and load in that second file that we created. And we can now see that has loaded in the four remaining shapes that need to be cut. And because the machine is already at its start point, we can simply come up, click play and let it run.
And now I've zoomed in on the cut that failed, we can see there is no height difference, there's no evidence that there was a failure there. Obviously that is just the different colours in the wood grain, but the actual surface that it was machining is perfectly smooth, and we'd have no idea that that job crashed. So some of you may be thinking, okay, that was a really example, just a handful of shapes. What if it was something more complex? Well, the same principle applies. So I'm going to open another file now, I'm just going to load in this roughing code. This was for a clock that I did earlier in the year. If I zoom out slightly, we should see the entirety of it. And it is a similar principle again. As we can see, we've got the blue lines, which are essentially the machining lines, and the orange lines, which are the fast movements. So if we look at the start of the commands again, very similar, we get up to this line seven, which is starting the spindle up. Now again, let's say this crashed halfway through, and we want to find a starting point roughly near where it crashed. We'll click the control F again, and we'll type G0. And we can now see that we've got 280 instances of this. So yes, it's going to take a little bit more work to find it with this, but we can easily quickly click through and get to a certain point in the job. Obviously, alternatively, you can roughly maybe scroll down to halfway through, somewhere about there, click into the text and find the next instant of it, which is there, line 9512. Again, same principle, we can just highlight all of the text before it, drag that all the way up to the top. We'll take a slight second because it's a much longer command. And if it is a large job like this with thousands of lines, well, you can just take the out in smaller sections. So we'll hit delete and then we'll start again and go up there, take another few thousand lines out. And this just ensures that the program doesn't get too bogged down. There's a tip as a quicker way to do it if you want to take out a large chunk. Simply hold down the shift key on your keyboard, scroll back up to where you need to go. In this scenario, say it's line 7 that we want to keep, so we'll click at the start of line 8, highlight everything and hit delete. Delete the blank line, click plot again. And now we can just see it's taken out the majority of the job and ultimately we can continue on from the point that we wanted to. So at this point, you should now be able to pause and restart a job on a different day or even recover a worst case scenario job where it has failed. Now it's not always perfect. Sometimes it can leave a little mark from where the new job picks up from. You may be able to sand it out. If you've had a bit broken, that's probably the worst case scenario because it may have damaged the wood. But ultimately, this is your best chance to recover what would have been a failed piece of work. I do hope you found the video useful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe it literally takes a second thank you all very much for watching and as always final thanks goes to my patrons if you want to get involved for one-to-one -one help early content and access to giveaways then check out the patron links in the description area below i will see you all on the next episode